we go through, um, remember that Canvas is going to be my way to contact and, and get a hold of you um, while I'm away for a few days here coming up. Um, I'm having surgery next week. So, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Anita. Um, so, please um, behave yourself. If I get your name back, that's an automatic you. So if your name comes back with bad comments from the sub, then that's an automatic you. And yes, he will have your pictures and he'll know who you are. <laughs> so, the one with the beard. He does know chemistry, so he can help you. But if he can't answer it, Mrs. Roberts down the hall can answer any questions for you. Okay? So if you need help while I'm gone, you can do that. Last resort, you can try emailing me, but I don't know what kind of condition I'm going to be in to email you back. Okay? I should be back on the 17th of April. Yes. Yeah, let's be four. Before I come back, you'll have a test, yes. After spring break. It's the Wednesday after spring break, so you'll come back to a review and then you'll take the test. Spring break is not next week, but the week after. First week in April. Okay, so um, Please make sure you're checking Canvas. I've got things up on Canvas for you. You will be um, doing a lab and uploading it to Canvas so that I can correct it from home. There'll be one that you'll do that you won't upload, but the one that I want you to upload, you'll upload from there. And I will take you through that and how to do that with a video. Um, all the videos are going to be online. You can already see I've got a lot of them already up for you past the day that I'm going to be gone. Um, so make sure you're checking Canvas. Make sure you're keeping up on your um, quizzes because the day of the, of the test I'm going to go, I'm hoping to go up and be able to move that score on to Encore. And I'm going to grade as much as I can at home and move it on to Encore. Yes? I have no idea. They're actually going in and fixing my neck. So, yeah, it's my neck. No, this is my neck. <laughs> I don't know what other thing. <laughs> Anybody can die. <laughs> It's not a big deal. It's a hereditary thing, so my sister and my mom have had it fixed, and so it's okay. All right, so let's go on and um, get going. So today, if you get ahead of us and you're understanding this and you're getting this stuff, have your assignment out so you can be working on it. Um, if you don't have a calculator, you will need one today. Grab one from the, the sink. Um, this unit is one that you will definitely need a calculator. Um, so make sure you've got one available to you. Wait, there's an eye wash station here, huh? Uh-huh. Can I use it just to wake up? No. I need my eyes just Splashed? Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily use it. I've cleaned it several times and it's still rusty. So it's, 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 it's worst case scenario if you have to use it. Trying to wake up. You can go over and use a sink and splash your face with water if you want. <laughs> yeah, but the eye wash doesn't have a drain, and so then we have to, uh, yeah. Okay, so everybody's got a calculator, yes? Okay, so on your pH lab, we're going to show you how to do those, those six things that I told you you couldn't do till today until I told you how to do it. Some of you freaked out and went and asked other people to how to do it. I will teach you that today, so don't worry about that. Um, if you weren't here last time, you're going to need to get that pH lab done. It is due next time. That's great, though, because you can turn it in and I get it recorded and it's going to be a part of your grade. That pH lab. So this one. And this lab we're going to be we're, we're do this lab next time. Yeah, this lab will be easy to finish in class and turn it in by next time. Okay, so here we go. Just to annoy you, and for those that weren't here last. Okay, so we annoyed you again. This video is up on on your canvas, so you can relook at it. This one is very good for um, doing. Bronsted and Lowry. We talked about two different kinds last time. Arrhenius, which was donating a hydrogen as an acid, and as a base, he donates an OH. And then Bronsted Lowry, and we went through the song there to sort of understand the Bronsted Lowry. pH um, scale, you guys, we went through a lot of different things that you could test last time and, and gave you some ideas. 
and we talked about it a little bit. Remember that below 7 is considered acidic, above 7 is considered basic or alkaline, and 7 is neutral, okay? So we also reviewed how to name acids. So up here on the first one, HI is hydriodic. What is HCl? Hydrochloric. What is H2SO3? It is not. What it, it is, it comes from a sulfite because it's one less oxygen. Sulfite, remember OS, we're going to get in a fight, so we change it to OUS and add acid. What about NO3? What is that? Nitrate, so think Thanksgiving dinner, A goes to? Ick and add acid. This is per iodate. IO, IO4 is per iodate. So what would I name it with a hydrogen? Periodic acid, yep. Okay, I, I spelled it wrong, it's okay. All right, so now looking at the next one, this is just going over what I talked about before with the acid and the base and be able to understand it. Remember, it's pH is the scale that we're using. Under 7 is acid, at 7 is neutral, and above 7 is base or alkaline. You'll hear it called alkaline. There are several equations that are going to be very important to us. Now, rather than you all freaking out and writing down as fast as you can, I have made you a beautiful little thing here that is a little helper. I'll pick up the extras on the other side. Okay. This is a version of what I've made for you. So I'll play with it while I'm out. And then, okay, I will do that. Is it charged? We're doing it plug in. So it's a little different charger. Okay. Okay, is it any different turning it on? Yeah, the button's right here. Okay, in the front. Okay. All right, I will play with it and see. Thank you. Okay, so has everybody got one? Do we got any extras I can pick up on the sides coming up? Okay, awesome. All right, so this beautiful square you're going to become very familiar with, but you're not going to get to use it for the test. So you're going to have to remember it. After you use it a few times, it will help you to be able to do things. So having this out in front of you, we're going to do some problems now. That's why you needed your math. Um, when I refer to H+, plus, it, it is H3O+, plus, so if it asks for that, it's still this bottom left-hand corner. So, basically, whenever I put a small p in front of anything, it means minus the log of it. Okay? So, if I want pH, I take minus the log of the H. If I want pOH, I take minus the log of the OH. Okay? So that's a way to remember it. To go backwards, I take 10 to the minus pH or 10 to the minus pOH to get the concentration. Okay? So that's just a quick trick to remember how to get back and forth. pH and pOH add to equal 14. So if I have one of them, I can take 14 minus that and get the other one. Okay, so that's what this is all about. I discourage kids from using the bottom one. And the reason why I do is I found that most kids put it in their calculator wrong and end up with the wrong answer and that makes everything else they're trying to find wrong. So I wouldn't go across the bottom. I would always go up and over. I find that there's a lot less errors. Okay? Okay, we're going to go through it one at a time. So here we have um, H+. Plus. So find H plus on your square. Where is it? Bottom left. It wants pH. Where is pH in respect to where I'm at? Just on top of it. Following the arrow up, what equation do I use? So I'm putting it in like this. This is what I want you to do with me. So if you've got one of my calculators, it's sort of a little squirrely as far as pH or as far as um, log goes. You have to actually put in the negative down at the bottom that has the parentheses around it. Then you have to find log, which is right underneath second, and you have to hit it twice. The first one's LN, the second one's log, okay, on mine. And then put the number in, 3.568 times, and there is a 10 to the button that you can use that's underneath the log, but you have to hit it twice, too. 
and then put in a negative 3. Then arrow over and parentheses. How do you do the square? How do you do the what? The square. Okay, so you actually have to, you can do it this way right here. Oh, or you okay. can hit this button twice when you do the times 10. Okay, what did we get? She got 2 point, yeah, I got 2.442. It says 2.55 on that, but I think it's 2.44. That's what I got. Okay, 2.44. Times 10. So you do times, and then if you hit this button twice, it gives you 10, 2, and then you can put the power in. Do you have a calculator? Okay, has everybody got a calculator and working with it? Because you're going to need to do it for the test. Yes. 2.44. Yeah, I got 2.44. Yeah, it should be ended up 2.45. So we'll just change this one to a 4 right here. That's what most of us were getting. That's not right. So make sure you got parentheses around the 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8 times 10, and then close your parentheses. Okay, so we're going to try a whole bunch of these. So let's try this next one. If the pH is 5.8, so find pH on your square. Where is it? Top left. And where am I going? What's the problem asking? I'm going down. So what is the equation I use? 10 to the negative pH. So we're going to put this in our calculator. So if you've got my, my calculators, there's a button, two underneath the second button. See it? 10 to the X. You hit that twice, so hit it twice, and it'll give you 10 to some power. Then you can put in the negative 5.8 and hit enter, and it gives you a number. Now, we want that number in scientific notation. My calculators don't like scientific notation unless it's really, really big or really small. And this isn't small enough. So we take that number and we say, okay, it's 1.58. Okay, so we're going to net, we've got to move that decimal so there's one number in front of it. So it's a review of scientific notation again. Okay? Okay, so double click this one. And then you just put negative and then put that number in, 5.8, and then enter. Okay, we're going to be practicing these a lot more. There's, you're, you're following along in your notes, hopefully writing down what you're doing. We're going to do a couple more. So find OH minus. We're given OH minus this time. Where is it? Bottom right. What are we trying to find this time? POH, which is right above that, right? And whenever I put P in front of something, what does that mean? Minus the log. Okay, so I am going to put that number into that equation. Let's try it. So put the negative in first. Double click the log button. Then put in 7 point, or 2.79 times, and then double click the 10x button, and then negative 6. And then you have to arrow over to bring that parenthesis in again at the right amount. That's what you got. You did it right. That's the POH. This is the POH. You need to make sure you don't forget that negative, though. That'll make a difference. So you do the negative first. Yes. That's just the, that's just the equation. Yeah. So negative log. Anytime I have P, that means negative log. Just remember that. Okay, let's do this next one. We're now at POH with the upper right-hand corner. Where are we headed? Yes. It means I have minus the log of it, whatever it is. So I'm trying to get it into a smaller scale is what they're trying to do. So this one, I've already logged it. Now I'm trying to get back and find out what the concentration was. Yeah, this one was the one above it where I, where I want this. So because I want it, I do minus the log of it. 
So this one now, I have minus the log of it, but I want to know what the concentration was. Okay, so now I'm going backwards. So on this one, you're going to use 10 to the minus pH, pOH, whatever I have. Okay, so on this one, if you've got my calculators, two underneath the second button, double click it, that'll be 10 to whatever power, and then just do minus 1.25. And then hit enter, and it'll give you your answer. This is what you should have got. How do we get? M, it, M it means concentration. It's the molarity. Okay, how many got this right? Okay, how many are still struggling? Nobody wants to raise their hand. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah, you just you're just do it. No, you're doing the the button two underneath, which is the ten to the x. You're hitting that twice. Okay. Hit that twice so it becomes ten to a little box. And then just hit the minus button down here at the very bottom, and then put 1.25, and then hit enter. Do you get the right answer? No, I just thought that you put Oh, wow. Okay. We're going to go forward. Okay, now this one is a little bit different. Okay, I've been given one thing, and only one thing. I've been given the POH. And I've been asked to find everything else and tell if it's an acid base or neutral substance. So find pOH on your, on your square. Find pOH on your square. Where is it? Top right. You have got to find every other corner. So my suggestion is do not go along the bottom. Go down to get the concentration of hydroxide, then go across to get pH, and then go down to get concentration of hydro hydrogen. Okay, so we're going to do it together. This first one we'll do together. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is say, okay, the pOH is 4.5. I've got that one. Then I'm going to take and subtract it from 14 so I can get the pH. That's the easiest thing to do, right? Now I've got the two tops, right? And since the pH is above 7, I know it's a base, so I can answer another question, right? So if you don't know how to do this, you should be writing this down because we're going to be hitting a couple more that you're going to be doing this your, yourself. Okay, now that I've got the pOH and the pH, which are the two tops, I'm going to go going straight down. What do I do going straight down on both of them to get to concentration? You do the 10 to the, ten to the minus whatever I'm trying to get to, right? So for the concentration of hydroxide, I go 10 to the minus 4.5, plug it into my calculator, I've got my answer. For the hydrogen concentration, I go 10 to the minus pH, and I get my concentration. So all we're doing is, is going around that box using that equations to get everything on the box. So you've got every corner. So you know the concentration of hydrogen in whatever you're doing, the concentration of base. You're finding the concentration of different things, and you're and you're learning if it's an acid or a base. Okay. Yeah. So you just go 3.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Yep. Because that's what it says right there. It's a negative 10. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So now let's keep going forward. I'm going to have you guys practice more on your own. So if you're getting it and the person next to you isn't, the answer is this, 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 and this. It's all of them. You can't go straight. You have to go up and over. Well, yeah. All right. This one just happened to work that way. They don't, they don't normally do that. Okay, let's go forward. Okay, so let's look at the top one. Now, on this one, I'm not asking for everything in between, but I'm asking if I have OH minus, find it with one finger on your square. Put it on your finger, uh, the OH, put your finger on the OH minus. 
We are trying to find pH. Put your other finger on the pH. Okay, how many steps do I have to do to get from OH to pH? Two. Two. I would go up and over. I would not go down and around. Okay? So take a second. See if you can get the right answer by yourself by going up and then over. Yes? We understand we can work on this. If you understand, yeah, write down, finish this problem with us, and then work on your assignment. It's not really that hard. It's plugging for You cannot get in, well, you can get a negative pH, but it's only if it's a really strong acid. So most likely, no. Yeah, you can you can start on your assignment if you finished and keep up with us in notes. Yes. Is hydroiodic acid uh, negative? Hydroiodic acid can be negative, yes. Okay, so hopefully you plug the first one in by just doing this, minus the log. And the second step would be doing 14 minus whatever you got on the first step. So did you get 8? Because across the top it's this plus this equals 14. Okay, did you get the POH? Were you able to do minus the log of that and get the POH? Were you able to get the pH? Is it an acid or a base? I don't know. I don't know. Acid below 7. pH below 7. Okay, let's go ahead and do the next one. So you've got an example to look at, but this time we are going to from concentration of hydrogen to pOH. So the opposite corners than what we just did. Yep, go up and around again. Wait, so you don't want to yeah, most kids screw up when they put it in the calculator, so I've just found it's easier to go up and around. It's also more input numbers thing. Okay, let's make sure we're working. Or I get to choose the seating chart. Okay, how'd you do? Oh. Error. Error, that's not good. Yes. You still, yeah, you still go 14 minus whatever you have. It'll give you the other thing. So all we're doing is just using this right here. Yeah, we, but we started here, and you go this way, so minus the log of what you were given. And then you get to here, and then you go 14 minus what you got to get to here. Yeah. So, so when you do, when you put this in right here, see how that's down? So you go minus log, and then our number was 3.495 times. Then use this button right here, hit it twice, so you get 10 to some power and then put in negative 4, arrow over, and put parenthesis. That's what the first number is. And then you would take 14 minus that. Okay? Yes? What? Okay. That's the answer. We're done. Yes? Can you what? Yes, this will be up on Canvas. They're, they're right on the main screen with the daily work. They're hot linked there, or they're embedded down below the grid. They're in for the day. Yes. Are there what? Yeah, this is unit 10. Oh, units, as in, no, for pH, there's no units. For concentration, it's capital M. Sorry, I was listening to his question and got mixed up. Okay, stay with me, guys. Here we go again. 
This one is one where you're given one and you're asked to find all the rest of them. No. Okay? Yep. Right. You don't have any more. I'm just giving you a whole bunch of examples. So you can use your green sheet or a blank piece piece on to write this down. I am giving you this. I want you to tell me everything else on that square and tell me if it's an acid, base, or neutral. That's light. That's what? Light work. Light work, huh? So base is more than seven. Neutral is right, and acid is less than seven. Yes, for pH. <laughs> Which is what I just told him. If the pH is greater than seven, it's a base. If it's less than seven, it's an acid. If it's equal to seven, it's neutral. Okay, see if you can do this. Find all the concentrations for me. Find all the pH, pOH. Phones are going to be mine, guys. There's a time and a place. This is not the time nor the place. This would end up being the... Wait, so if it's above 7, what is it? The you, want, you want to do pH to do yeah. above 7. So it's an acid. Below 7 is acid. I should have asked earlier. So, like, if I get, like... Uh, my number for like my age, like I do a log, yeah, and whatever number I get that, yeah. subtract that from 14. To get POH. So if you take minus the log of a, of a concentration of hydrogen, you get pH. If you take that away from 14, you get POH. If you go 10 to the minus POH, you get OH minus. Okay. Can you start putting up slowly? Oh, no. I'll just give you one at a time and I'll walk away so you can check and see if you're doing anything right. You need to find the pH. You want to do it from pH, not POH. Yes. So you're going from pH down? Yes, use that one. So the pOH doesn't determine there. No. pH is what determines acid base, not pOH. So that's all we did last time was talk about we talked about different theories and what acid bases are and stuff like that. That that was in the Bronsted Lowry that video that we had at the very first. We did that. It's still basic. Basic. Yeah, it has to be exactly seven. Okay, guys, let's look at the answers on the board. How did we do? Did we were able to find the answers. Thumbs up. If we aren't, thumbs down. I need to know who needs help. If, you're, if it's the very last number, I'm not worried about it. If it's the first number, I'm worried about it. Okay? All right, so a lot of your thumbs up and a lot of you moved on to working on the assignment. You didn't get this one? All this one is is 10 to the minus pH. That's all you have to do. Put it in your calculator. You didn't put the minus. Okay? And this one is barely acid. It's just very barely acid. It's probably what can be considered neutral, but not really. Okay, so now, yes. We're going to do that in a minute. Okay. All right, so number one, we need to be able to look at pH, um, OH concentration, hydrogen concentration, and be able to tell if something is acid base or neutral. That's sort of scary. Okay, so the pOH, I can look real quick and say, okay, well, 14 minus that number, is it going to be above 7 or it'll be below 7? It's going to be above, so I'm going to get a base, right? So that one's fairly easy to figure out. Okay? What about the next one? Well, since it's hydrogen, I can look at this number right here and say, if I take the log of it, it'll be around 9, and the log is a pH which means I'm going to be basic. 
Okay, on the next one, this is opposite. Base or basic, same thing. It's just a base. On the last one here, this is an OH. So these exponents have to add to equal 14. So that would mean my H plus would be a minus 10, which means my pH would be closer to 10. I can really quickly do that in my head, or I can do minus the log of that, subtract it from 14, and I get it's a base again. Okay, so I can do it quickly, or I can go through the steps. Either way, but you need to be able to tell me if something's an acid or a base. All right, so last learning check, all by yourself, again, for a second. You have a pH of 8.3, acid or base? Base. Base, good. And then you need to find out what the concentration of H plus is, what the concentration of OH minus is, and what the pOH is. So, see how fast you can do it. I'm going to give you one minute. That's it. So, all you're doing is trying to find out the rest of them. So, you have this. Find all these. That's it. So, follow the arrow. Follow the equation on the arrow. Okay, down to 45 seconds. Right. You need to recognize that it's the same. Mm -hmm. Yep. Down to 30 seconds. How fast can you find all the answers? Logs right here. No, 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 I couldn't find it, but it's right here. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> fifteen seconds. Okay, let's see how you did. Whoops, went too fast. How do we do? Yes. For 5.0, I'm As long I'm not going to be as strict as as um, as far as the things for the concentrations, as long as you're really close. As far as the POH and pH, we should be taking those to 2 after the decimal, so I should have put 5.70. So it should always be 2 after the decimal for pH and POH. Okay, but since they gave me a pH that was only 1 after the decimal, I kept that. Okay. All right, so grab your lab. We're going to do the pre-lab together real quick. Uh-huh. A titration pre-lab. So that's all the notes for today. Next time we actually are doing a titration lab, make sure that you wear shoes, okay, and make sure you don't wear your favorite outfit because in case you get any base or acid spilled on you, you won't really know until it goes through the wash on your clothes and then it comes out very holy, okay, holy, okay. Okay, so next one, here. If you stay with me, you'll basically have your pre-lab done. You'll only have to do one problem by yourself. So on number one, what is meant by priming the glassware? Whenever we work with um, a titration, we do what's called priming the glassware. Basically, that just means I'm going to rinse the glassware with whatever solution I'm going to use in it so that I can get out anybody else's crap from the, 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 the glassware. So only my stuff is on the glassware. So priming just means I'm going to rinse through and to clean it with the solution I'm going to use. It's not distilled water. That's important. It's not distilled water. Priming is not with distilled water. It's not cleaning with distilled water. It is cleaning with the solution I'm going to use. Why do we do this? We use it to clean it, to prep it, to make sure that the burette actually runs correctly and is working correctly. Burettes often get plugged. And because they get plugged, if you go ahead and set up a whole titration and then figure out your burette is plugged, then you can't do anything but dump out your burette and start all over again. 
Yeah, it's a long skinny tube. I'll be showing you the different things that we use. <coughs> sort of, but it has a twisty tie thing at the end. Okay, so this next one, why do we use burette and pipettes, which we'll both be using, both of these during lab, um, is because instead of graduated cylinders, they're more accurate. We can actually get to two after the decimal place um, on a regular basis and sometimes three after the decimal place. So we can get very, very accurate results. Now, on a titration, you don't have to rinse out a flask in between, um, especially for what we're doing because we're mixing sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. And because we're mixing those two, we make salt water. And salt water is neutral, especially if a strong acid and a strong base. So because it's neutral, if I have some left in after I dump it out, it's not going to affect the next titration. Theoretically, you could drink the water. I would not drink the water or anything in lab ever. <laughs> okay. So next part. Oh, going back. Okay. Good. I know it's like drilled into my brain, and I can't get rid of it. Yes. Wahaha. <laughs> Okay, we ready to go forward? We got some no's and a couple of yes ma'ams. The NaOH and the HCl mix to make water and salt. And salt is neutral and won't affect the results of the titration. Okay, so the next one, is that big enough? Can you see that? Back row, can you see that? Okay. All right, so this is when we did our dilution equation where it was M1V1 equals M2V2. This is a version of that. I want you to just write this down somewhere on your thing because you're going to need it in a little bit, especially the one on the bottom. So on the one on the bottom, when we do a titration, we're trying to get the number of hydroxides and hydrogens to equal each other. That's called neutralization. So we're going to take the number of hydrogens, which is going to be the coefficient on the whatever the hydrogen is, the balance equation, our acid, times the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid equal the number that's in front of the base in the balanced equation times the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. Sorry, that's too low for some of you in the back. I'm seeing the bob and weave going on. The bob and weave, bob and weave, bob and weave. That's what you get for being in the back. Ha -ha. Sorry. All right, we got it written down? This is the equation that you're going to be using throughout the, throughout the titration lab. So since we're using HCl and NaOH, these numbers right here are going to be 1 and 1. So we really won't need them um, in there. But if we use something else, and we'll do a couple examples of, of other things where they're not 1s, then we have to put them in there. So for the most part, we're going to use that big equation at the top, MAVA equals MBVB. Done. A's being the acid, B's being the base. Okay? So going forward, first thing we need to do is write an equation. Okay? They already gave us two of it, HCl and NaOH. So A, yeah, let's try that again. HCl plus NaOH gives... We are going to do OI. Outsides are going to go together. Oh, yep, OI. And insides are going to go together. Okay, remember the positive or the first one on each one still stays the first one on the other one. Since both of these are plus one and minus one in both of these, all we do is switch partners. Okay, so the positives stay positives. Yep, it's a double displacement. Strong acid, strong base. What are we getting on the other side? NaCl and H2O. HOH is H2O, yes. Does it matter if we do like NaCl or Cl and Yes, it does. It does? Yeah, you've got to put the positive first. Positive always has to go first. So you can put H2O and then NaCl, but he was saying, can I put CLNA? No. 
you got to have the Na, the positive first, written in a chemical equation. Okay, so then it asks you to label, what was the acid? HCl is your acid. Good. What's your base? Good. What's your salt? And what's the water? Okay, so you're labeling all that. I didn't do that up here, but you're labeling it all. Okay? Now, on this next part, you're actually going to do get information about a titration. So, we are going to pull some information out of here. This right here is the concentration of the base. So, I want to get you used to pulling it out of, the or out of the story problem and actually labeling the molarity of the base equals 0 0.100 molar. This was used for a lab and are again told to find the unknown molarity of the acid solution. So the acid solution, I don't know, so I'm going to go MA for molarity of the acid is a question mark. That's what I'm trying to find. You start with 10 milliliters of acid. So that's my volume of my acid. And then I, all, I used 13.17 milliliters of base. So that's my volume of my base. So get used to actually pulling things out of the story problem and labeling them. Okay? You'll get a point for that on your test. Then you'll also get a point for saying, oh, okay, we're looking for MA, so I'm going to go MA VA equals MB VB. And now I'm going to plug in. So I'll get a point for showing the right equation. Now I get points for plugging in. So MA is equal to 10.00 milliliters, which is equal to... That's what I'm still solving for. I don't have any numbers to put in for it. Oh, and then 0 0.100, 0, 0, that's a funky one, sorry, molar, times the volume. So I get a point for, sh for plugging in. And now I'm just going to solve for MA. How do I do that? I divide both sides by 10 milliliters, right? Over here... The 10 milliliters cancels out. Over here, just the milliliters cancels out. I can plug that into my calculator, and I get what MA is, the molarity of the acid, which I didn't know before. Tell me what the answer is. Is it that one, or is it different? So we would label it molarity of the HCl, which is our unknown acid, our, our con concentration we didn't know. So let's go to the next one. We're going to do the next one together. Number seven, I'm going to leave it for you to do on your own. Okay, ready? Keep going. Everybody got this one written down? No. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ready to move on? Okay, so again, start by pulling things out. So as I'm reading, you are now given a solution of 0.5 molar NaOH. What is that? MB. That's Good. So MB. Okay. And told to find the molarity of an unknown HBr solution. So that's my... Molarity of the acid is unknown concentration of HBr, which is hydrobromic acid. You start with 5 milliliters of HBr. VA, good. I, I put it up before you guys told me what it was. Okay, and needed 38.55 milliliters VB. of any OH. Yes, VB. Okay, setting up again, I'm looking for MA. I just always like whatever I'm looking for to be on my left. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go MA times 5.00 milliliters equals MB 
times VB okay I'm gonna divide both sides by five milliliters Over here, that will cancel. Over here, just the milliliters cancel. Plugging in, what do we get for MA? And we probably should have reported 3.86 because we haven't got more. Well, the volume of the NaOH is poor, so. I would let it go. Okay. All right. Any questions with this one? Back row, you're on strike two. That means after that, you get to come sit where I want you to sit. And then we get to take back row? Possibly. Okay. So, any questions with this? So, on your last one, you don't have as much to pull apart. Be careful because last period they had a hard time identifying what went with what. Make sure you've got the NOH with the NOH and the HCL with the HCL. Okay. When you're finished, you come up and I'll stamp that little stamp and you'll get your points um, so you can go back into lab for next time. So the acid is going to have the H in front. The base is going to have an OH. Okay. All right, and then work on your assignment, and the rest of the time in class is yours. Remember, if you get your assignment done before the bell, you get an extra stamp for an extra credit point. Okay?